It's 1944. This guy is Joseph Herman, and he's up at 18,000 feet without a parachute. Just a few seconds ago, he was piloting an airplane on a mission to Germany. Normally, pilots and crew wear parachutes inside the plane, but Joseph liked to be comfortable, so he took off that heavy parachute backpack. Suddenly, his plane was hit. He ordered all crew members to evacuate and ran for his parachute. But seconds later, the plane exploded. The explosion threw Joseph out of the plane, and he found himself hurtling around the night sky without a parachute. In a panic, he began to stare at the ground, looking for a safe place to land. A river, lake, or swimming pool wasn't an option. Hitting water at high speed is almost the same as hitting concrete. Snowdrifts are great. If he could find one deep enough, he'd have at least a semi-soft landing. But it's November, and there's no snow anywhere. The best option? Aim for the woods. Tree branches and bushes might slow his fall enough so he could survive hitting the ground. These thoughts took Joseph some time, and now he was at only 6,000 feet. That's when a miracle happened. He smashed into something and, just out of reflex, grabbed onto it. At first, he thought it was a random bit of the plane falling down to Earth. But no, it was someone's legs. It turned out to be a member of his crew who had just opened his parachute. Holding on to his new best friend for life, Joseph had almost reached the ground. Both officers prepared for impact, but the parachute was only designed for one person. With double the weight, it couldn't drop at a safe speed. Even though Joseph got a massive hit to the chest, courtesy of his parachute partner, he still managed to stick the landing. He suffered several injuries, but still, he survived a fall from 18,000 feet. But that's not even the record for a free fall without a parachute. Meet Vesna Volovic. About 50 years ago, she was a trainee flight attendant and was, like most days, serving passengers in the cabin. The plane was flying at over 33,000 feet when it just broke apart. Vesna survived the initial chaos and began her free fall. She immediately lost consciousness and had absolutely no memory of what she was doing as she sped towards the earth. A few minutes later, she touched down, well, smashed down, and she survived. A local forester found her among the wreckage of the plane. She suffered a ton of injuries, but after 16 months, she made a full recovery. She even wanted to return to her job as a flight attendant. She had no memory of the crash or the fall. Maybe she was saved by the trees and the snow. And a huge shout out goes to the hero forest ranger who found her and gave her life-saving first aid. In one of those classic coincidences, Vesna wasn't even supposed to be on that plane in the first place. The airline made a mistake and put our survivor on the flight instead of another girl with the same name. Many people said that the universe realized its mistake and gave the girl a second chance. This man is Luke Akins, and he did one of the craziest free jumps ever, with no parachute, obviously. So we're at 25,000 feet. Four people jump out of a plane, and only three of them have a parachute. The poor guy without a chute is our hero. The rest are the crew. They film Luke's jump and help him stay in the right direction. They have smoke flares attached to their feet so Luke can see them through the clouds. Now we're at 17,000 feet. Luke's speed is now 150 miles per hour and his pulse is almost three times his resting heart rate. About halfway through, a crew member helps Luke remove his oxygen mask. The higher the altitude, the less oxygen there is. So when Luke left the plane, he needed a mask to stop him from passing out. But now, our hero is breathing on his own again. 5,000 feet. The other team members open their parachutes and Luke is left all alone. He approaches the landing site. It's a giant net, the size of about an eighth of a soccer field. It's stretched between four large cranes. Each crane has special spotlights to help Luke find the perfect landing spot on a net suspended 20 stories up from the ground. Luke's right over his target, and just before landing, he flips over onto his back to land safely. 
Three, two, one. Touchdown, land down, whatever you call it. The crowd goes wild, and Luke gets some serious bragging rights. A stunt like this takes nearly two years of training and practice. Luke Akins had already skydived 18,000 times before. So on average, a free fall lasts 2.5 minutes. Math, 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 math. So Luke's spent 31 days in free fall. How about jumping from five times higher than that? A freezing cold 128,000 feet. This thing is called a high altitude balloon. It's used to fly higher than seven miles up. After about two hours, this thing took future record holder Felix Baumgartner into the stratosphere. To jump from that high, he needed a special spacesuit with an oxygen reserve and additional heating. When the hatch opened, Felix needed another 15 minutes to get his mind right. Then all he had to do was take a simple step and he was off. After 20 seconds, he had reached a monumental 435 miles per hour. And 30 seconds later, he reached his maximum speed of 843 miles per hour. Felix flew faster than many supersonic airplanes and even broke the sound barrier. Down on the ground, a bunch of people even heard the supersonic boom, just like the one you hear when planes hit the speed of sound. It would have definitely stunned Felix, but he was going so fast, the boom happened far above him. Much more dangerous was the force on his body. After about a minute of flight, he started spinning at warp speed. His body was experiencing more G-force than astronauts taking off in a space shuttle. If he had completely lost consciousness, the jump would have ended way differently. But after 13 seconds, the spinning stopped and he managed to stabilize himself. After three and a half minutes, he started to slow down. When you get closer to the surface, the air gets thicker, so you fall slower. Four minutes and 16 seconds of free fall. Felix released his parachute, but it was too soon. The problem was that his visor started to fog up because of some heating problems. So he didn't know exactly how high he was. Just to be safe, he released his parachute a little early. He said he felt like he was floating in water, not knowing which way was up. Nine minutes later, he finally touched down on solid ground. He had just set several world records, highest jump and greatest distance and speed of a free fall. Plus, he's the only person to break the sound barrier without using an engine. But his highest jump record was soon broken. Alan Eustace jumped from nearly 136,000 feet. So sealed spacesuits and special parachutes are a must. But what if you found yourself at 130,000 feet without any equipment at all? It would be about 30 degrees outside, so you wouldn't exactly freeze. But as you drop down, you'd be dealing with around negative 70. A warm jacket might come in handy. But the real threat would be the lack of oxygen. If you want to stay alert, you just got to have an oxygen mask. Say you have a warm spacesuit and oxygen. What do you do now? You need to get into a position that creates maximum air resistance. Spread your arms and legs, point your chest down, and tilt your head back. Now you have time to choose a good place to land. Remember, water is not your friend. Look for snow or woods. Once you've chosen a spot, you need to prepare for impact. Why not follow Luke Aiken's example? Turn over on your back, press your legs against your chest, and cover your head with your hands. It's probably still gonna hurt though. <laughs>